Well, ahead of this weekend's G7 summit, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau welcomed French President Emmanuel Macron to Ottawa. The two leaders held a joint news conference this morning where both were asked about what are likely to be tense talks in the face of American tariffs. Trudeau was asked about his approach with the U.S. president. I think it's uh, been a feature of uh, the relationship that I and, and uh, certainly Emmanuel have uh, maintained with the president that uh, allows us to be blunt and frank, and we have been throughout our exchanges uh, with the president from the very beginning. I can certainly speak personally to say that uh, I have consistently stood up for Canadian interests, consistently uh, demonstrated uh, where we disagree, but done so in a uh, polite and cordial context. I think that's what Canadians have always expected of me, and that's exactly what we're going to do. CTV's Mercedes Stevenson joins me from Quebec City as we take a look ahead to the G7 summit. So Mercedes, he's using words like blunt and, and frank, but really a lot of people are talking about this, the dynamics that are set to be in place between all of the leaders really as a result of the U.S. president's actions on tariffs. The three big T's expected to dominate this summit, Trump, trade and tariffs, none of which are on the agenda, of course, that Canada put out, which was supposed to focus uh, on things that were easy to talk about uh, and easy to get behind, like women's equality and reducing single-use plastics that go into the oceans, things like straws and bags, uh, all of that really just being pushed to the side, Bev, to talk about what is the glaring, obvious elephant in the room, and that is the steel and aluminum tariffs, the impending trade war between the United States, Canada, Mexico and the European Union. And this is really going to be a situation of Donald Trump uh, walking into a room of leaders who are not feeling very friendly towards him right now. And whereas before they were playing a little bit nice, hoping that maybe they'd avoid the wrath of Trump, that hasn't been the case in, the, in these particular tariffs. And you have the White House saying uh, behind closed doors and sort of quietly whispering to journalists and reports that there may be more tariffs coming for countries like Canada who are threatening to strike back with their own tariffs. And uh, a report I was just reading now that apparently the American president has been complaining to his staff that he doesn't want to come to Canada. He thinks it's basically a waste of time. He's going to get lectured by a bunch of G7 leaders who he doesn't agree with uh, and doesn't really care for their opinions or even really for the G7 necessarily with its current angle. And he thinks that he should be focusing on that upcoming summit with North Korea on the nuclear issue there rather than wasting his time up here in Canada. So he says he's coming. He tweeted it out this morning. But there's still a very real possibility here, Bev, that he could sub in Mike Pence, the vice president, and he's done that before. Yeah, interesting. So if he does show up, I mean, there's going to be a push on behalf certainly of our prime minister and others to, the, the, to push the U.S. to maybe c give us an extension um, and a continued extension on tariffs. But it doesn't sound very possible that Trump at this stage, if he does show up, is going to change his mind. Uh, I would say an extraordinarily low chance he would change his mind, particularly just given the way this president approaches diplomacy uh, and the strongman image that he has. Coming to an international summit, listening to other leaders and changing his tune would be very uh, against type for him, against the role that he plays, against the way that he does business, which is this very tough, aggressive, likes to be top dog. If he's going to make a decision to remove those tariffs from Canada or other countries, it would be in a way where he can frame it as it's a win for America. America and his decision and he pushed the other countries into a corner. Not a situation where he's walking into a room full of leaders who disagree with him and are going to try to pressure him. That wouldn't be the image that we would expect him to respond to. You never know with Donald Trump, but if he does, it'll be because there's some way he can frame this uh, as he changed their minds or got what was good for America. But at this point, he is still portraying Canada as a national security threat, something that's been hugely offensive to many Canadians who point out we defend North America together. We fought side by side in wars. But his argument is that this Chinese steel is being dumped into the American market, uh, sometimes through Canada, and that that affects their own steel industry and therefore is a national security threat because, of course, they use steel to build things like tanks uh, and other war machines. And, and those are things that the Americans say they need for their national security. You know, Canadian government and contractors point out there are a number of parts of American weapons uh, and American uh, military machines that are actually built here in Canada. And and then go into the American product. Okay, Mercedes, thank you very much. You're welcome.